Hey everyone, I'm Cull and I'm showing you how to solo ZF Zombies as a Warlock without any items or consumables. This is the fastest solo method to level your Warlock from level 40 to 53, and it's worth learning this farm if you ever want to level a Mage, Paladin, Hunter, or Shaman in ZF during your classic WoW career. Highlights and timestamps below. First, I want to give a shout out to Tommy Salami Wow. I was able to figure out how to do this consistently with a warlock thanks to his videos about solo ZF with a mage and paladin. And I want to acknowledge that a lot of information here is repeated from those videos. Now let's go over preparation. As you're approaching level 40, you want to make sure that your bags and your bank are filled with soul shards. This is the most important item for your next 13 levels and you probably want to avoid spending an hour farming up shards while learning this, especially in the early levels we'll be making a lot of use of Voidwalker Sacrifice and various Warlock Stones. It's also good to consider picking gear from your quest rewards that will help with your survivability, like high stamina, intellect, and spirit pieces. Some other items that are optional but useful to consider getting are the Nifty Stopwatch Trinket from the Badlands quest chain. This item will give you a speed boost or you can buy potions of swiftness. Limited Invulnerability Potion, making you immune to physical attacks for 6 seconds. If you're about to get hit by a pack of mobs, this can give you time to get to an evade spot. Mana Potions will let you deal more damage by letting you use your max rank of Reign of Fire more often. Healing Potions can be used similarly to your health stones, giving you more health to tap away from mana during the kill phase, survive getting to the kill spot, or tank damage from zombies while opening graves. Other optional items that can help with your health and mana sustain, allowing you to deal more damage are Mage Blood Potion, giving you 12 mana every 5 seconds for 1 hour, Nightfin Soup, giving you 8 mana every 5 seconds for 10 minutes, Scroll of Spirit for more mana when using the 5 second rule, Scroll of Intellect to increase your mana pool, or you can get any food that will give you the well fed buff for stamina and spirit. Applying Wizard Oil to your weapon can also give you a slight bump to your Reign of Fire DPS. When it comes to gear, it's not very important past your quest reward choices. Even with my established route, I don't have specific pieces I go for just for this farm. You get so much effective health points from the void bubble that your stamina doesn't matter as much. You die if you get dazed on the way to the kill spot, whether you have tons of stamina or not. My stats aren't super impressive, just quest gear, random drops, I don't even have my class quest orb. If anything, I would only recommend splitting the gear you've collected already into two sets. One that maximizes stamina stat priority, and another for spirit if you want to use the demo spec. It takes a lot of plus fire gear to be worth it for Reign of Fire spell coefficient, which is only 33%, which is 8.25% per take out of 4 or something. Anyways, once you hit level 40, go to your class trainer to unlearn your talents and start your mount quest chain. It's time to choose what spec you'll be using. With Demonology, if you make full use of the tools this spec provides, you'll have an easier time getting to the kill spot. You'll have a high HP Voidwalker to take damage for you, two consecutive big shields on demand, and damage mitigation. However, the biggest drawback with this spec is how much longer it takes to complete the kill phase. You will also consume a lot more shards, and it can be difficult to gain more shards as you finish up the kill phase in the early levels. This is due to how disciplined your mana use must be, as we're making use of the spirit stat, mp4, and the 5 second rule to acquire mana between Reign of Fire casts. The only setting I would personally recommend using this spec is if you are already spec demo and want to try learning solo ZF before committing to an Affliction respec, or if you're playing hardcore. Affliction will allow you to cast Dark Pack, giving you a constant source of mana to DPS with. Suppression also makes securing shards a bit easier early on. You may want more stamina gear since you'll miss out on the mitigation from demonology to cover for your mistakes, but let's talk about the point allocation for demonology. The talents I recommend starting out with are as follows. 2 points in improved health stone to help with sustain and survival. 3 points in improved imp as filler just to avoid putting any points into demonic embrace. The reason we want to avoid putting talents here is because we don't want to reduce any of the spirit our gear is giving us, which is important for the kill phase with this spec. Next, get 3 out of 3 improved Voidwalker for the bigger shields, and you have 2 filler points you can put in either Health Funnel or Fell Intellect. Now take Fell Domination, 4 points into Fell Stamina, and 2 points into Master Summoner. This makes our Voidwalker as tanky as possible in case we need him to hold mobs a little bit longer, and allow us to quickly sacrifice and summon a new one on the fly. 
Now we max out our unholy power. This is just filler from Master Demonologist and put two points in improved Firestone for a bit more damage. We take Demonic Sacrifice as our main key talent. This allows us to sacrifice our Voidwalker or Fell Hunter for either 3% health or 2% total mana every 4 seconds respectively. This is the main way we ensure we have resources to kill the zombies. With that, we can put our last 6 points into Master Demonologist and Soul Link. This will increase our damage mitigation on the way to the kill spot and during grave openings. From here, we move over to the Affliction Tree, get 5 out of 5 Corruption. This is for time efficiency and shard replenishment toward the end of the kill phase. And our last key talent, 2 out of 2 Improved Life Tap for health to mana conversion efficiency. Now get 2 out of 5 Suppression for mana efficiency on those Corruption casts and any emergency fears we might need. Next, we go to Destruction. You will definitely want your next 4 points in Cataclysm to save mana on every Reign of Fire cast. Now let's talk about Affliction talents. Drain Tank lives on brothers. If you have Dark Pact at level 40 then your spec is good to go. But if you want to further optimize the spec for this farm, I recommend 5 out of 5 Suppression. Most of the mobs will be orange, red, and even a couple skulls when we first start this farm. As we finish off the kill phase, it's important to replenish shards. Since we want our dots to land on these high level mobs early on, we're going to take 5 out of 5 Suppression. Next we want 2 points into Improved Life Tap for health and mana conversion and efficiency. And now you have 18 filler points to spend as you like. But definitely use two of them for Grim Reach as it will be useful in granting us extra range to multi-dot as we finish up the kill phase. Now if you want a more comfortable transition from Demo to Affliction, you can respec at level 48 and get 2 out of 2 improved health stone, 3 out of 5 demonic embrace, and 3 out of 3 improved Voidwalker so you're never without the buff shield. Between these two specs, I would recommend Affliction if you're playing on Era. I mostly go over Demo for the possibility of doing this in Hardcore. Now we'll set up a macro that will make this farm much easier to get full XP from. Due to a mechanic called the XP Leash, you'll want to have a 30 second timer macroed onto your lowest and max rank Reign of Fire buttons, and I'll explain this macro later during the kill phase portion of this guide. So that completes our preparation. At this point you should have your shards, your level, your spells, your spec, your mount. Head over to Gadgetstown, get the flight path if you haven't already, and set your hearthstone at the end. Before going to the instance, make sure you have a bag full of shards, including your Hellstone, Soulstone, and Firestone, as well as food and bandages if you took first aid. And for the sake of this video, this run is with the Drain Tank spec at level 40, using no items other than Soul Shards. When you get into the instance, equip your max stamina armor set, make sure your Voidwalker is summoned, and you have your Demon Armor buff up. Cast Shadow Ward and start mounting up, and before your mount is fully casted, sacrifice your void walker for its shield so as you ride through these first three packs of mobs commit to the right side and when you level up more your aggro range will decrease and you can zigzag to avoid them better if you get dismounted in this hallway and have some distance between you and the mobs run behind this vase over here this is an evade spot and you can hearth out now once you're all the way through this first hallway go to the left and spam jump off the side of the mountain next to the wall if you rub up against the pillar, you'll be dismounted. Once you're up on this wall, you'll be dismounted and go for the jump. When you do this jump, do not hold your forward movement key or you'll fall off. Instead, once you get to the side of the wall here, jump in place, then tap your forward movement key to get on top of the wall. So that's full jump forward, letting go of your W key in midair, then jumping in place and tapping forward to get on top of the wall. Run northwest to the end of the wall and wait for the mobs to evade. Make sure you're not too close to the edge towards the three pack on the ground as you might aggro them and have to wait for those to evade as well. Here's an example of avoiding rubbing up against that pillar to get dismounted up here instead and then the jump itself. And here you can see what it looks like if you hold W instead of letting it go. Summon your Void Walker, and once all the mobs are gone and no others are targeting you, set it to stay, jump down here close to the wall, use Shadow Ward, summon your mount, and sacrifice your Void Walker before your mount cast is complete. Now let's talk about some of the mobs. Sunfury Witch Doctors place wards that you might have to kill when you're in an evade spot. 
The fire ward does 150 damage every 3 seconds in an 8 yard radius and will prevent mobs from resetting if it's in your range. Sun Fury Blood Drinkers melee and have an instant 50 damage 8 yard AoE around themselves and Shadow Casters have a 300 damage Shadow Bolt. Due to how much spell absorption we have with Shadow Ward, it's preferred to take lines which avoid melee damage but might receive more spell damage as we can tank a lot more Shadow Bolts than melee. So head through this arch and stay on the left side, right behind these two blocks as this is an evade spot and stop some mobs behind us briefly as we pass through. Cut hard to the right until you reach the wall. These are all shadow casters here. Then get around the stone wall as soon as possible. This breaks line of sight with the casters charging shadow bolts behind us. Jump over this jar, go through the arch and stay on the left side wall. We'll then pass another set of two blocks and go around this corner. Now our shields are wearing off, so we're tanking the rest directly. Make sure as you pass the remaining mobs, you strafe or jump turn to face toward them. Having your back turned when they hit you has a chance to daze you, knock you off your mount, and probably kill you. If you are facing the mobs as they hit you, even mounted, you have a chance to dodge, block, and parry. Now as you approach the scarab room, look out for Thekka, who patrols around. Avoid aggroing him as he has a 4.5 second 250 damage spell, which then ticks for 11 damage. Here are some useful evade spots if you get dismounted around here or aggro him. Now we just have one last corridor as we pass this mob. I like to mark them as we'll have to watch out for their patrol later. For speed, you can go to activate the boss like I did here on the way to the next evade spot to make this jump, jump in place, and tap your forward movement key. Be aware that when you activate the boss, there's a chance for the zombie to wake up and attack you in a nearby grave. Now we need to talk about a few more mobs. Sand Fury Soul Eaters have a 5 yard, 2 second cast time spell that drains 100 mana and health. They also apparently swap health with mobs that have less health than them. Sand Fury Shadow Hunters are ranged and have a 20 yard instant cast hex that lasts 12 seconds. This will kill you every time. Before we open the graves, we need to activate the boss. This is just done by entering the room. Just go past that halfway point on the floor stone there and we can go back to our evade spot. The reason we do this is so that when we open the graves, the zombies will run toward the boss first, then come after us. If we don't activate the boss first, they would just immediately hit us after opening the grave. Now it's time for the grave opening phase. Make sure you mark and watch out for the two patrols. If you pull a shadow hunter, you want to reset every time, and I would also suggest resetting if you pull a soul eater with a demo spec, or you're below level 46. Since we're not relying on any movement speed increases, we need to position our camera and character so that we can open graves behind us at maximum range. This will give us the leeway we need to run straight for the evade spot without mobs catching up, like so. Now for the second grave's opening. There are two ways to do this, but first we need to summon a fresh Voidwalker. For the early levels of affliction or people wanting to be more cautious, Stay your Voidwalker here and travel this way to the top of the wall.
pull the mobs that we've opened from the grave so far and lead them to the other side of the boss room, like so. Once you've lured them all over here, you have enough time to jump down and open the graves. Again, you want to make sure you open the graves with your character as far ahead as possible to give yourself more time to get around the mobs. As you're coming up to pass the mobs here, send your Voidwalker with Torment on autocast and use Suffering when he's close to most of the mobs. This will make it so the zombies target swap to the Voidwalker, giving you more time and mitigation to get between this wall and the vase. As you enter this space, the mobs will stop moving since it's an evade spot. Now we can climb up this ledge and wait for the mobs to evade. Once you get to higher levels, or if you're using demo spec, instead of routing the mobs to above the boss room, you can just do this. So you want to try to stay more towards the right wall here to avoid aggroing the mobs on the left as long as possible. You can see the social aggro here. And then we use suffering to try and AoE taunt as many as possible. Now for the third and final grave openings. Depending on your level, you may or may not be able to go for this grave. Skip it if you need to. This one is pretty easy. Just open the graves like before and head to the ledge to wait for them to reset. Now we can climb up to above the boss room to start the pull. If you're playing Affliction, summon your Imp, and if you're playing Demo, put on your Max Spirit set, summon your Voidwalker or Fell Hunter, and use Demonic Sacrifice. Now it's time to start the pull. You'll always get the boss's attention here, including the rare mob Dust Wraith, who has a chance to spawn next to him, but they'll both reset while we set up for the kill. So we're going to pull most of the mobs by letting them social aggro each other. So we put an AoE here. Dot one mob in the doorway to social aggro the ones lingering there. As you're moving along this wall, be cautious of getting too close to the edges since the mob can hit you from the bottom if you're close enough. And the mobs that haven't social aggroed on the back right here, if you're close enough you can try and AoE them, unfortunately that's not the case in this clip. So here's this trick to stack the mobs without any abilities or limited invulnerability potions. The Z axis is a bit weird in this game. As you're jumping between these two ledges, make sure you either press your forward movement key again or press a second movement key while in midair, like strafe. Inputting a movement key while in this space between the two ledges will make the mobs think you're on the ground below and they'll always move in that direction. Constantly forcing the shift in their movement throughout the kill phase will keep them nicely stacked the entire time. Now it's time to talk about an important mechanic. Much like the mob and social aggro leashes in this game, there's also an XP related leash. When you normally kill mobs solo, you're awarded 100% XP for it. However, if you brought the mob down to 50% health and ceased all hostile actions on the mob for 40 seconds, you've now decreased the XP that mob will award to 50%. With more 40 second gaps in damage towards any individual mob, you can overwrite this reduced XP to even worse values. This is why we use Reign of Fire and put a 30 second timer on the cast so we make sure we hit all the mobs within 40 seconds and don't lose our XP leash. So if you ever got a mage boost and thought some of the XP values were a little weird, I'm not pointing any fingers, but... So make sure you don't start DPSing the mobs till you have them stacked and you're ready for the kill phase. 
So this is the general game plan for this kill phase. You jump back and forth between the ledges, adding an extra movement key in midair to keep the mob stacked every time you jump. As Affliction, use your highest rank Reign of Fire spell and use Dark Pact with your Imp between the casts. And as Demonology, use your Voidwalker or Felhunter Demonic Sacrifice to get health or mana per 5. Use your max Spirit Armor set and space out your Reign of Fire cast so you can use the 5 second roll. Make sure you use your lowest rank of Reign of Fire whenever necessary so you keep your mana up. This run is kind of scuffed since I forgot to summon my Imp and I don't have Demonic Sacrifice since I'm Spec Affliction so I kind of have the worst of both worlds here but you can see that my um, resources are managing. The best place to set your Imp is on the shorter length wall to the left of my character. Set it to stay and phase shifted. This way it's always in line of sight for Dark Pack no matter where you are. Also. When you cast Reign of Fire, you should do it earlier than I do in this run, since the first tick of Reign of Fire is one quarter of the way through the channel bar, so you can fit all four ticks of the damage in one cast. Once you get down to a manageable amount of mobs, like 3 to 5, and you have enough mana, you can start multi-dotting them to finish them off quicker, and hopefully get back a few soul shards. This is hard for the first few levels since you're going to have issues with resist, which is why I suggest keeping a generous amount of soul shards going into this. Loot wise, you'll get a lot of Mage Weave and Silk Cloth, Superior Health Potions, Greater Mana Potions, Level 35 Food and Scrolls, Steel Lock Boxes, Aquamarines, and Level 38 to 41 Green Loot. On screen is the runs per level from 40 to 53. If we assume you get 5 runs in per 1 hour instance lockout, you will be level 53 in 13 to 14 hours. But yeah, once all the mobs are dead, then you can loot! and. Some of them are going to die along the side of the mountain, so here's how you can kind of get to the loot there, otherwise it's out of reach. You kind of use your mount to jump alongside of it and catch the ledge, and then you should be able to loot the mobs there. And the last thing I want to show is a evade spot that I found by accident um, right here. I don't know if this works for any other race and body type other than male undead, so if you come across this as you try this out, please let me know in the comments if it works for any other race and body type. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you give this a shot and have a much easier time learning it than I did. I went through many hours of death, trial, and error a couple of years ago to figure out the nuances of doing this with a warlock, and it's like rain of fire. Like farming mobs with rain of fire as a warlock. You, you never get to do that. Like this is the only place you ever get to do that. It's so fun. Um, I'm sorry to not have a complete run in this video. I really want to avoid leveling this character so I can try to do scarabs at some point. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments or you can join the classic warlock discord and ask in the era leveling chat. I'm usually there. I'll keep a pinned post with any new information updated, and when Phase 3 of Season of Discovery launches, you can expect me to upload or stream some runs of ZF if they didn't change the instance too much. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. And also, fuck mages.